Oh, yo, what up, guys? Welcome to another video. These are te top 10 songs you didn't know were written by Eminem, man. Listen, you telling me Eminem was a ghostwriter right here? He was ghostwriting for other ghostwriters? For these artists? Man, not, bro. Ever since I, I knew, I heard that there'd be ghostwriting out here, man, I have lost respect for almost every single rapper, bro. Because now I can't trust the, if they're the one that's writing this shit no more. And if you, if you, if you can't write your own shit, are you really an artist? No, you're not. You know what I'm saying? No, you're not. You're not an artist. You're just, you're like a an actor. You know what I'm saying? You're an actor. You're a puppet being told what to do. If you can't write your own shit, I don't consider you an artist. I don't care. I do not care. I do not care. But let, let, let's get to these, these songs that Eminem ghost written. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Picks for the top 10 songs you didn't know were written by Eminem. New York City, yeah. you are not rocking with the best. For this list, we'll be looking at popular songs for other artists where Marshall Mathers is credited as a songwriter. Which of these entries did you least expect to see on this list? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. The fuck? What is this? Number 10. Rockstar. Bizarre. Before his music career took off with the release of the Slim Shady LP in 1999, Eminem was a member of the hip-hop collective D12 and kept making music with the group until it disbanded in 2018. Bizarre, another member of the group, put out Rockstar in 2005 as the lead single from his debut solo album. The song, with its silly humor and infectious melody, was co-written, produced, and mixed by Eminem. He also makes a cameo appearance in the Ridiculous Music video, along with the rest of D12. Although not a hit in the US, the track charted in a few European countries and was even referenced in Eminem's 2018 song, Stepping Stone. But it's almost as if sometimes we're not even friends, which reminded me busy. Rockstar was the shit. Number 9. Mm. American You, Yellow Wolf. After gaining online recognition for his mixtape, Trunk Music, Tennessee rapper Yellow Wolf signed on to Eminem's Shady Records, under which he released his 2015 album, Love Story. Never wear your heart on your sleeve, cause it don't go with the zoo. On the album's fourth single, American You, Yellow Wolf showcased his southern roots and delivered a perfect blend of country and hip hop. Your daddy told you that girl was nothing but a problem, but you fell in love, cause to you she was like a supermodel. Written from the perspective of an average blue-collar American detailing his struggles and dreams, the song was co-written by Yellow Wolf, Luis Resto, and Eminem, who also received producing credits. Although oh, wow. Yellow Wolf left Shady Records in 2019 to release his music independently, American You remains one of his most beloved songs and marked a masterful collaboration between a unique rapper and his mentor. Oh, sweet sounds of American Number 8. Let's Get High Dr. Mm. Dre featuring Hitman, Corrupt, and Ms. Rock The relationship between Eminem and Dr. Dre began with the production of the rapper's star-making second studio album, released in 1999. Talking that, walking that, spitting it, hoes. Smoking this, drinking that, getting it, hoes. In the same year, the two also collaborated heavily on Dr. Dre's second album, 2001, with Eminem receiving multiple songwriting credits on the album. Come on, let's get high. Get high. Oh, my ladies, let's get high. One of such tracks was this firecracking collaboration between Dr. Dre, Hitman, Corrupt, and the Long Island rapper Ms. Rock. At just under 2 minutes 30 seconds, Let's Get High is one of the shortest tracks on the album but manages to pack quite the punch, largely due to its funky bass line and hard-hitting lyrics. I make the poor hop. Pull up at the spot, we buy the barrels in my jeep up apparel, stopping in the party. Number seven, got some teeth, Obi Trice. Mm -hmm. In the early 2000s, Shady Records signed 50 Cent, putting out his debut album, Get Rich or Die Tryin', which became the best selling album of 2003. This huge success almost completely overshadowed other rappers on the record label, 
such as Obi Trice. Okay, 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 OBC. No more focus, old pose, got a career. After spending years in Detroit's underground rap scene, Obi Trice got signed by Eminem and released his debut album, Cheers, in the same year as Get Rich or Die Trying. And if I leave here tonight and I fall asleep and wake up, hopefully she got some teeth. Eminem handled production on most of the tracks and co-wrote Got Some Teeth, the lead single off the album. Featuring his signature twisted humor, lyrical wordplay, and a killer beat, the song peaked at number 54 on the Hot 100 and reached the top 10 in the UK. See how like I got a lot of Denario, the DJ's playing Obi song on the stadium. Number 6. New Day. 50 Cent featuring Dr. Dre and Alicia Keys. Mm. Speaking of 50 Cent, for his fifth studio album, the East Coast rapper set out to make a record influenced by other genres, such as rock and dance. I woke up this morning thinking about the old me when I was feeling like Miller Light and Old E. This idea mm. eventually got scrapped, and a more traditional hip hop album titled Street King Immortal was recorded in its stead. Well, come on. Although Street King Immortal never saw the light of day either, this inspirational upbeat collaboration with Dr. Dre and Alicia Keys was released as a single to promote the album. Eminem received songwriting and mixing credits on the song, which charted in the US and Canada. Number 5. Hands Up Lloyd Banks featuring 50 Cent. East Coast rapper Lloyd Banks gained worldwide popularity as a founding member of the hip hop group G Unit with 50 Cent and Tony Yayo. I'm a rap star who goes to be riding around in that car. Two in the front and the back got the plasma. After their commercially successful debut album, mm. Beg for Mercy, Banks kicked off his solo career, releasing this collab with 50 Cent as the only single from his second album. Shout it when you party with me, we going way past quarter to three. Co-written mm. and co-produced by Eminem, the track failed to match up with the success of his debut solo single, peaking at number 84 on the Hot 100 and dropping off the chart only four weeks later. Nonetheless, it was a fiery collaboration between the two G-Unit rappers and remains a lyrical classic to this day. Number 4. Hello. Ice Cube featuring Dr. Dre and MC Ren. Yeah. The legendary hip hop group NWA heavily popularized gangster rap and has had a major influence on rap music from the late 80s to date. Ain't no cop in the plea, ain't no stop in the G. I'm in the six, you got to hop in the three. Company Monopoly. By the year 2000, the group had largely disbanded, but three of its members, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and MC Ren, would reunite for this final single on Ice Cube's sixth album. Fill it blows up your spot. Take your notebook, your bitch, and your clock. The song served as the opener on the brilliant multi-dimensional album that smoothly transitioned from radio-friendly songs with bouncy hooks to more introspective lyrical displays. Eminem reportedly wrote Dr. Dre's verse on the track, proving that even in the company of those who came before him, his pen game remains unshakable. Questioning Dre's credibility. What? Wondering if it's still in me to produce hits. Y'all be killing me. Mm. Number three. On Fire, Lloyd Banks. What? For his debut solo album, Lloyd Banks found a co-writer and co-producer in Eminem, teaming up with the rapper to produce On Fire, the album's lead single. The track quickly became a hit, peaking at number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 and setting a solid foundation for Lloyd Banks' solo career. It's burning out, we all fire. Off the back of this hit single, Banks' debut album, The Hunger for More, achieved a level of commercial success attributed to mostly veteran artists at the time. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, a position it held for two weeks and has since been certified platinum in the U.S. If you know anything about me, then you know I'm a baller. If I am the first night, I ain't gonna call her. Number two, Forgot About Dre. Dr. Dre featuring Eminem. When his unintended hiatus from music in the mid-90s led to rising doubts over his rap skills, Dr. Uh -huh. Dre put out his 2001 album to prove to the world that he still got it. He didn't write that shit. My toe freeze. Oh, please. You better bow down on both knees. Who you think taught you to smoke trees? 
While the album was hey. led by the moderate hit Still Dre, it was this song, the second single, that encapsulated the entire album's message. Yeah. Just started your tape of NWA. One day I was walking by with a walkman on. When I caught a guy, give me an awkward eye. Eminem appears on the track as a featured artist, but what you may not know is that he's the song's only credited songwriter, penning both his and Dr. Dre's verses. <laughs> An international hit, it won the Grammy for Best Rap Performance by a duo or group, a testament to the fact... I am weak. So you're telling me, <laughs> Dr. Dre, featuring Eminem, <laughs> and the only person that gets credit is Eminem because he's the one that wrote the whole song. Holy! <laughs> you can't make this up. That only magic you is created this when Eminem and Hell Dre nah. work together. Now all I get is hate mail all day saying Dre fell off. What? Cause I've been in the lab with a pin in the pad trying to get this damn label off. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and, and such a bitch ass or all of such a bitch ass up. Such a bitch ass up. Tupac Resurrection is an Oscar nominated documentary released in 2003 that detailed the life and death of the widely celebrated rapper Tupac Shakur. Mm. The soundtrack for the film, a 14 track platinum certified album, featured several songs that had appeared on previous Tupac albums and a few unreleased songs that were revamped to a new sound. For this process, Eminem was brought on as an executive producer and received songwriting credits on this posthumous collaboration between Tupac and the Notorious B.I.G. Eminem expertly weaves both rappers' verses into a timeless song celebrating the legacy of two icons who were taken away too soon. We was young and we was dumb, but we had heart in the dark when we survived through the bad month. Mm. Do you That's, agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. That's crazy. So Eminem's out here being ghostwriting for a lot of artists. They need to come out of that closet, fam. These artists need to come out of the goddamn closet, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy.